In this video, I'll discuss multi-site disaster recovery solutions. Disaster recovery, or DR, is a proactive approach for planning for negative incidents that might happen. With multi-site DR, we could have our IT service workloads running in multiple locations, whether that's different cloud providers or between a cloud provider and our on-premises network. Often, we have a hybrid of our on-premises configurations and the cloud, and we replicate data between the two. An active-active configuration distributes the workload across these locations. Shared storage might be used by application services depending on the distances involved. This way, for example, a website firm might use the same storage for clustering purposes. DNS round robin can also be used in an active-active configuration, whereby we have multiple DNS A records that point in the end to different IP addresses because we would have a presence for our IT service on-premises as well as in the cloud. However, currently in Amazon Web Services, we cannot assign on-premises virtual machine instances to an elastic load balancer. We can only use elastic load balancing in the cloud for EC2 instances launched in the AWS cloud. In an active passive configuration, we would replicate site data to an alternate location. Then, at that alternate location, if required, services can quickly be restored or started in case our primary site fails. But they're both not actively processing requests at the same time, as is the case with an active active configuration. The recovery point objective, or RPO, will determine the replication method. For example, synchronous replication means there is no delay. When we do a disk write at our primary location, at the same time we're doing a write at our alternate location. With asynchronous replication, there is a delay. It doesn't necessarily happen at the same time, hence asynchronous. With multi-site configurations, traffic can be routed to system or on-premises environments in the cloud. We can use Route 53 DNS with weighted routing. This allows us to send traffic to similar distributed backend resources based on a priority value. DNS can also be configured during a disaster so that it's weighted such that traffic would be sent to the cloud instead of to our on-premises active configuration. EC2 auto-scaling could also be used to add more instances. Database services could also be configured to cut over to the cloud. Often, a lot of this happens through the use of DNS configurations whereby we redirect the same name to a different IP address in our cloud configuration. In our diagram, we have our corporate data center on the left where we've got an application server and a database server. This would be our active configuration. In the cloud, at the same time, we could also have another active configuration. So this would be active, active. Now, this means that both sides, the corporate data center or on-premises configuration, as well as our Amazon Web Services cloud configuration, they would both be active and processing requests at the same time. However, if there is a failure, for example, in our corporate data center, then we could ensure that our second active configuration in the cloud would take over. And again, Route 53 DNS configurations with weighted routing play a big role in this. In this video, we discussed multi-site disaster recovery solutions.